So can you break down the series opening scene for us? Is there significance to the moment with the glass in his shoes or was it just a really effective way to show his particular kind of devotion? That beautiful scene was actually the beginning of 102 and the one who came up with it was Ethan. Ethan signed, I asked him to sign the project based on a pitch that I gave him that didn't exist of the villain. Me and Sarah came up with this villain guy that judges people. He was like a, 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 a different kind of villain. And I knew that someone like Ethan Hawke wants to work in an environment that he can be part of the creation of the character. So I told him, join the project and let's create this together. We, we, the three of us and the writers. And that's what happened. So when Ethan came up with this scene, that's the moment when, when I realized and he realized, okay, I know that character now. I understand him very well. He is not a trickster. He's not a false prophet. He's a, he's a, a, a prophet that is on the wrong, but he's a prophet. He's someone who believes in what he does. And um, later on, we loved that scene so much, we felt this could put us in the mindset of the villain and set the tone of the whole show. And uh, it's, it's just a great start for the whole show. He mentioned that the shoe scene with the glass was actually your idea. Cause like I went in excited to talk to him about it. And he was like, that was all Ethan. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I was trying to come up with this character because, you know, Moon Knight doesn't have a definitive archetypal villain. And I kept trying to think of who this guy would be. And if it wasn't a comic book, what would be his like portrait? You know, like comic books often have one full page drawing of the villain to introduce him. And I was like, what would it be? What would it be? And what's his secret? You know, if you could see behind closed doors, what's he doing? And I thought, oh, he's pouring glass in his shoe and um, listening to Dylan. <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's, that's a weird character. That's a guy I want to get to know. So Scott Derrickson joked that getting you to tackle the black phone was a little bit more difficult than usual since you don't typically play villains. And here we are in 2022 with you tackling two remarkable and very different foils. What drew you into Harrow's particular brand of self-righteous villainy? Well, for Scott, I'm really playing a villain. I mean, the, the truth of the matter is that is a villain. Harrow falls into a line of characters that I've often, I mean, Harrow doesn't think of himself as a villain. And I don't think, and when you see the whole series, I'm not exactly sure that he is a straight up villain. He operates in a different lane. Whereas in Black Phone, my character is genuinely terrifying. And this is something else. This is more of a nuanced character. He, Harrow thinks he's saving the world. He thinks he's gonna heal. I mean, he thinks he's Saint Harrow. You know, and that of course is his problem. When anybody thinks they're a saint, kick them out of the room, you know, uh, immediately. Because his great problem is probably his spiritual pride, so to speak. But I do think, you know what, to grow is to change, right? And I have to keep changing as an actor and keep finding different ways to put myself in gentle ways to challenge myself to create different characters. And being inside different genres really helps. And this is a genre I've never been in. This, this Marvel universe is in a way its own genre. You know, what, what the humor is, how the action works, how the stories are told, they have their own tone to them. I don't know, this is just where I find myself at this point in my life. So you've mentioned having a love for comics most of your life, but you waited patiently for the right comic book world to come along. Do you hope to dive into more of these characters in the future? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it all depends on on your collaborators, you know? An actor doesn't really work with a studio. You know, it doesn't really work like that. You work with the other people on set, right? And so, yes, the studio creates the environment. But for me, I would love to do this if I could play complex and interesting people and get to work with people like Mohammed and Oscar, like that, that's no problem for me. That, that's just what I love to do.